So good afternoon, everyone. And uh, first of all, thank you very much to Open Mode for organizing these very interesting webinars. I'm uh, Stefano Moret from Imperial College London, and together with uh, Gauthier Limpens from Université Catholique de Louvain, we're going to introduce you our new energy scope model. And before setting the presentation, I just mentioned that we leave here our contacts, so we're very happy to discuss with you and please get in touch if you are interested in uh, questions about the model. Especially, I try to post regularly on Twitter if there are any uh, new updates about uh, our energy scope model. So in this very brief presentation, we'll cover why we developed energy scope and give a very brief introduction uh, to how to get started to energy scope, to the methodology, as well as applications and leave you with some references. Uh, it all started in Switzerland. Uh, you might remember that after the Fukushima nuclear accident in 2011, uh, Switzerland decided to phase out uh, its nuclear power plants, which, as, a case, as you can see from the graph, were providing around 40% of its electricity uh, production back then. And so, of course, the phasing out of nuclear power uh, opened a very big debate on how to fill the gap left by nuclear power by 2035, and that's where the development of the energy scope model started. So the question, of course, is why should we develop another energy uh, model? And especially when we started developing the energy scope model, uh, we realized that most models available, especially back then, uh, were not open source, were focusing only or mostly on the electricity um, uh, sector. They were not optimizing both the investment and operation strategy of the energy system, and they were featuring a rather complex formulation and high computational time, which was making it very difficult to consider uncertainty. So in a nutshell, the energy scope model is a multi-vector, multi-sector bottom-up model. So it includes electricity, heating, and mobility. And if we look at the structure in this uh, slide, we can see that we characterize technologies in terms of uh, uh, investment and, uh, and operating costs, as well as efficiencies. We have um, uh, all the available resources and the demand as input. And then we find the optimal operating and investment strategy uh, to minimize the total cost or, the, or, the, or, for example, the emissions of the energy system subject to mass and energy uh, balance constraint and, for example, storage constraints. It, is, it has what we call the snapshot modeling approach. So it optimizes the energy system in a future target year with an hourly resolution using typical days. It has a multi-period formulation, uh, it takes, which allows to take into account the seasonality of demand, energy storage, and high shares of intermittent renewables. And it has a concise structure and low computational time, which allows for quick what-if scenarios and uncertainty applications. Of course, this model doesn't do everything. So for example, it is not appropriate for more grid-related studies, such as dispatch studies, control, or multi-stage investment strategies. And if you're interested to get started with energy scope, so we advise you to start by checking out our paper, which we reference here, and all the documentation, which we try always to make as detailed as possible, to fork and run our code, which is available on GitHub, and here is the link. It can be run with the free solver GLP Sol, and of course, data can be adapted to the case study. And follow our developments on Twitter, for example, with the hashtag EnergyScope, and please get in touch if you're interested in more information about the model. And now I let it to Gautier for the part on methodology, applications, and results. Thank you, Stefano. So I'm going to present the methodology and some results we can have with EnergyScope. We like to represent an energy system with three boxes. At the very beginning, we have the resources that we can import from other countries or we can locally produce. At the very end, we have the demand, the heat, the electricity and the mobility demand. In between, we have hundreds of technologies which are collaborating at the same time to convert resources into other resources, other energy carriers, and at the very end, demand. Well, a realistic energy system looks like this one, where we have 20 resources, 10 demands and almost 100 energy conversion, from which storage, we have 20 storage, thermal, fuel or electrical storage. Well, why energy scope? Why, what this model does? Well, first it optimizes at the same time the investment and operation strategy. It does that for the, all the sectors at the same time with a holy resolution over a year. And it managed to do that with almost one minute per evaluation on a personal laptop. Well, when we look at the data, we'll say that's strange because it's very hard to represent with a holy resolution over a year and having a one minute evaluation when we optimize. And that's true. And how did we manage that? Well, when we look at the data, we have a lot of redundancy. 
we have this 8760 hours on a, day, on a year and in that year we have a lot of days which are similar so what we do is we split these days and we gather them together to represent to have these typical days to represent all the 365 days of the year with only 12 typical days we managed to be accurate enough and using an accurate reconstruction method we are able to represent the 365 days so the kind of results we have it's on the one hand we'll have like holy resolution over a day and we see the very typical um, production of photovoltaic in yellow here and also we are able to catch uh, this weekly to monthly cycles for storage. Here it's an illustration with thermal storage. And at the end, we have also these seasonal cycles of the storage, which is able to be optimized. The energy scope model has been applied to several countries at, the, at that time, at this time. Switzerland, Belgium, where we already published several papers, and then we are working on France, Germany, Italy, and other European countries. As we are not experts of the other countries, we would like to have more collaboration, more exchanges with the people to be able to uh, propose accurate messages. The energy scope model is suited for three kinds of application. Uncertainty application, because it's very fast, so we can make a lot of evaluation and apply uncertainty quantification methods. It's also suited for scenario analysis, because it's very fast, we can use it to assess for different uh, CO2 emission constraints and figure out what's the best way to reach a low carbon energy system. At the end, it's also suited for this kind of uh, technical studies to understand better the role of storage or the role of renewable fuels or how to integrate a lot of intermittent renewable energies in the energy system. Thank you for your attention and if you have any questions, feel free to contact us.